Okay guys, so there were a lot of requests for me to make this video after I installed two Radeon 7s in my Threadripper gaming PC, or well, Threadripper streaming PC more specifically. So I listened and I got everything ready for the most part and we're finally going to crossfire the Vega 64s. So I have two Vega 64s as you know. These are the liquid cooled versions and they're both the exact same card. Vega 64, Liquid Cool Edition. So, I'm going to install them both on my PC. Now, yes, I know what I did there. Even though you read the title and it says Vega 64, I had the Radeon 7 here. And you're probably wondering, well, in that video, you used the Radeon 7. So why now are you not using dual Radeon 7s to show us the performance? Well, I kind of want to do that, but there's two reasons and one issue that I... Well, two reasons, one of them being an issue that I, uh, I just can't crossfire these beautiful beasts just yet. So, the main reason, and this is like the big reason, is that the power supply just simply isn't good enough. These cards consume upwards of 300 watts of power. The power supply I have is an EVGA 80 plus gold, 850 watt power supply. Two of these, consuming 300 to 350 watts of power, you can quickly see how that combined with a 8 core 16 thread Intel Extreme Edition CPU, 64 gigs of RAM, uh, a couple SSDs, and, uh, and some RGB fans and stuff like that can quickly take up all that power. So, we're doing the Vega 64s which have a 250 watt uh, power draw, roughly speaking, under load, and we're just going to test them in a few games that I know kind of support Crossfire, although I'm really not expecting much, but let's just get over to the PC and install these in the system. Now, word of warning, I can't actually record it because I record to an external PC. And if you don't know, you can only connect the Elgato to one graphics card. If each graphics card is taking turns rendering a frame, that means I can only record one half of the frames. And no, it just doesn't look, it doesn't look like, you know, a slower, maybe 30 FPS. It just looks really bad. So we can't record it, but I will talk about what's happening and stuff like that. But this is the point. I think you guys just want to see me install this in the system. So hopefully the exposure on this camera doesn't look too terrible because it looks really bad for my, the lights in here are way too bright. Uh, I need facing lights. That's the point. Let's head over to the computer. Okay, we're at the computers and here's, this is our system today. So, i7-9800X, let's uh, grab our two Vegas. So, I'm actually not extremely excited to do this. Um, not because I don't want to see, like, the performance. I'm excited to actually play with them in. It's that these cards are literally the world's worst thing to install in a system. Not because they're bad or anything, it's because that whole shebang going on. So, I need separate radiator mounting screws. That I hopefully have enough of. I have two. Oh boy, this will be fun. Nope, nope, I've got uh, two more down here. So, I need to mount the radiator separately on the top. Uh, I need to first mount the graphics. It's just a process. I actually dropped the radiator recently while trying to uninstall the thing. Oh, haven't taken out all of my... PCI Express slots, hopefully that can rest there without falling directly through. What are you doing? The other thing that's great about this PC-11 dynamic is it can be used like a test bench. Because of how open it is. But man, this is just going to be a pain. I want to go through the whole process with you guys. Just to kind of gauge how much of a pain this is going to be. To get on there. So that has to go up there first. Or down there. I'm installing the bottom card first to make it easier. So that's installed. We're gonna open the top, and we gotta figure out how to mount this. This is not. This is, this is a process. This is uh, Vegas 64 liquid cooled. Again, probably one of my favorite, if not my all-time favorite graphics card. Like the second I saw that this existed, I needed it. I was hoping to get one air cooled, one liquid cooled. But due to a mistake, I ended up with both. But I can't complain because I got each one of them for 200 bucks. So people wonder like, oh, why would you buy them? Because this thing, the big negative. Oh, that's not even the right screw. The, the biggest negative with these Vega cards. Yeah, they're power hungry, they're hot. But they, you know, 
The reason they're not worth it is that is not good for the radiator to hang by one screw. Is because they're very expensive. Take out the price though, make them about 200 bucks, and they're an amazing deal. So actually, I have not used this graphics card that's been sitting on top of the bookshelf in forever. I think I tested it like once. What is going on with this radiator right now? You can cut. Oh my god, I haven't even taken off the thing yet. You can kind of see where this becomes quickly an issue when installing in a case like this and not like a test bench. I wanted to get a test bench, but they're very expensive. The reason I'm showing you guys the whole process is because since I can't really show the gameplay, because I can't record it, and I don't have like a cameraman to stand behind me, um, I gotta, gotta get this video up in time somehow. And I am being fully honest about my intention to get my videos longer for the reason that, like I said, I won't be paid for January. All right. Don't cross the streams. It's too late. I've already done it. Now, a recommendation I have when mounting these radiators is don't do it while it's turned on. Because I have. And that poor, poor fan. This actually looks very nice if I do say so myself that is just that is beautiful I do love this it's very what's the word like industrial alright so let's in, connect the bottom connectors first so we need two 8 pins these cards are power hungry AF man stay child friendly and actually I don't know the performance. Usually when YouTubers do these kinds of videos, they know what they're doing and kind of like what they're getting into. I kind of know that Crossfire, the technology that allows you to use two Radeon cards together in tandem, is basically dead. So not many games, if any even, support it fully or at all. But let's plug that in. Please turn on. We got fan spin. We got no leak so far. Let's see if we get display. Uh, I'm going to close the top. Like I said, it does just look quite nice if I do say so myself, which I do. Now, I was having a problem with these cards before. Is that one of them kept displaying a black screen. And we got a display. Nice. I don't even know if you guys see me. Again, I'm unprofessional, but I'm professionally unprofessional. Overclock 21%. Alright, so I'm going to get launched into a game. It just does, I mean, the all these four tubes, man. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, this, like, uh, wire stuff is in the way. Give me that. Um, all these, what is it called, liquid tubes? I, what do you call them? I, I can't English. Yeah, 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 well, um, tubes. Yeah, whatever, the, tu the tubes, man. The pipes. Ah, I don't even know what to call it anymore. But basically, they're kind of in the way. But those Radeon logos, they just, I love the look of this. This whole thing, if I lit it up all red, it just makes such a nice system. That's why I want to put four of these, or four in quad fire. But I can't get four of these, so like two of these, two Radeon 7s in here. I don't know, what do you guys think? But I'll need two power supplies. Um, that's the point. Let's head into, and uh, let's. I'm going to play some games actually real quick. I'm going to talk about how the games perform. Sadly, I can't show you. Um, if you want me to try to get two Elgatos, I think I can do it. Try to get two Elgatos. I do have two. Connect one to each and record the frames or try to record at 144 FPS. If any of the games work really well, I will make a second part of this video and it will have them uh, recording at 120 FPS so that it records half, which is 60, but that's not the point. I'm going to head and play some games and we'll talk about it after. One second. All right, so real quick, one thing, I'll just record this whole time and talk about it. One thing I have quickly noticed is that my system... That's Google Chrome, by the way, if you guys can even see it, is very unresponsive. Google Chrome, all but broken. I've got our sound capture, even though it's not even supposed to be on. Completely broken. Let's try to launch Far Cry 5. So, for reference, on medium high settings, medium to high and even ultra, the settings really don't change the FPS in the game. We were getting anywhere from 
uh, 90-ish to about 120 FPS. Best case scenario, our FPS doubles to 200. Worst case scenario, it halves or is zero. Hey, uh, quick update. I don't know if you guys can see that on the bottom, but in st while installing graphics drivers, the second Radeon has turned off, so the Vega 64 has turned off, and there's a green light. I've n I didn't even know it could be green. I thought it was blue or red. There's a green light on the power indicator as opposed to the blue one up here. Let's restart this. That's weird. I don't know if I just like fried it separately and it's just like, oh, well, this GPU's dead. It would be disappointing if we fried a Vega 64, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Just sell it as untested. I'm kidding. Um, but that is, oh, it's back up. That's so weird. So installing the driver turned off the second, uh, the second GPU and made the light a color I've never seen it be in my life. I didn't know the power light could be green. That's crazy, dude. And now there's no power light at all. So it's not drawing power from PCI. There we go. Now it's back to red. That was weird. So I thought that was uh, just something fun. Oh, the screen flashed for a second. Oh, here we go. Let's start on. And it's off again. And the green light. Okay. GTA 5 is... Well, launched, and it looks like, yep, each graphics card, 80, 90% usage. Yes, this is what I've been looking for. Okay, let's, um, let's just hop, I want to get the gameplay, I really don't want to run a benchmark, because I want to see... If the game is, I doubt this game is going to be playable because you you kind of miss like the stuttery feeling or anything that might be negative when you're just watching a benchmark. But this, I know the camera angle sucks, guys. Don't worry about it. Eventually, I'll be good. Eventually, I'll live somewhere better, okay? Hopefully. Hey, guys. What's up? Welcome to my street corner. So far, though, we're actually getting what looks like playable FPS. Oh, that's some nice FPS. 180. 240. Yes. Oh my god, that is so playable. That is so good. Glad you guys can't hear sound. Wow. Wow. I, it was like, I knew GTA 5 was a crossfire, like, really good crossfire game. But this is just, I know, guys, just, I'm going to play GTA 5. I'm trying to think, can I even play through the story mode on stream because of how the characters talk? If someone wants to tell me if, if I can, um... If I can, uh, if I can play this game even on stream at all. Because. The characters say some just, you know, not friendly, Twitch friendly words. Let's try to make this dude crash. Come on, Lamar. I'm gonna make I'm like Lamar Crash. Let me kill some guy. There we go. Yeah, really being a good person here. Oh my! He just blew up a car. Okay, so guys, GTA Five. I'm mad at because, of course, GTA Five made it so that Lamar can't be stopped. Like you can't crash him off the road. He just hit a car and it just straight up blew up. That's I I want to play. I want to start playing this game again. But that's not the point. FPS wise. Okay. Honestly, that is what I should have started with. FPS wise. How did the game work? It was getting 100 to uh, 200 FPS on the max possible settings. 
Crossfire, which had both cards about.